Hello, it's Russ Curtis, Professor of Counseling. I want to talk about this topic, uh, disadvantages of KREP accreditation. This is specifically for the uh, clinical and school counseling programs, master's and PhD. Um, I recognize there are advantages to having standards and that if there are certain agencies that want to, you know, just kind of make sure that, hey, whether you graduated from a school in California or Alabama, uh, or Texas that you're that we know that if you you know, finish from this program that you've got you've met these standards um, so feel free to chime in but I did want to talk about the disadvantages because a lot of times these standards get created and we stop looking at how useful they are for us and there are some disadvantages to KCREP and I'm hoping that more folks and particularly the younger folks in the profession start talking about this um, let's make some changes. And I do think there are groups that are starting to kind of push back a little bit. First of all, this is very costly to be a member of KCREP, which then precludes uh, rural and smaller colleges from being a part of it. It's particularly unfortunate when you consider that we need people trained in the rural areas to work with clients. And so, you know, this can wind up costing their jobs if they, you know, if it wasn't an accredited program. It's also very timely to uh, be a part of KCREP in terms of preparing the self-study. We spent about two years doing that. Uh, our document was over 4,000 pages. Think about the books and articles we could have written, the classes we could have redesigned, the videos we could have created with that time. Um, so it's difficult for programs to specialize. Let's say you've got a program in Alabama or Florida or Arkansas that wants to f specialize in family counseling or trauma-related family counseling and really set up their program so that people, anybody, let's say you've got a student in California that says, I'm really interested in trauma uh, family counseling. I'm going to go to this school uh, that, that specializes in that. But it's kind of dictated, the curriculum's dictated, so it makes it difficult to do that. I'm not saying that programs can't kind of get known for a specialty, but it's generally, particularly in the master's program, hey, you've got to teach these classes, you got to meet each standard for each class. Um, and all I'd ask is, hey, where's the research evidence for each standard? With each standard, put citations on the end that this is appropriate for beginning level counselors to learn and know and is needed. Give me, give me that. I, you know, I can't write an article and just say, hey, we should do this without having citations. So give me that. Also, this one really bothers me because I find this one to be dangerous. It's, um, uh, it's just exclusionary, if that's a word. It keeps good people from being in our profession, I think, that we can't hire somebody who maybe has really specialty, maybe a psychologist with specialty in assessment and DSM diagnosis, because they're a psychologist, they have, they, they couldn't be hired. Or maybe somebody with a marriage and family, uh, a degree in marriage and family couldn't be hired. They've, everybody's being hired in a counseling program has got it to have uh, graduated from a KCREP accredited program. Um, and boy, I just think that's dangerous for the profession, uh, ultimately. Um, and, you know, the accreditation status does not necessarily mean it's an effective program. Are your students graduating and can work effectively with clients? And we're talking clients of all type, uh, severe and persistent mental illness, uh, diverse clients of all types. And so uh, we don't necessarily get that just because the program's accredited. So I recognize this can be controversial. I look forward to your comments, but let's start asking questions about these rules that just get enforced upon us. All right, good people. We'll talk to you on the next video. Take good care.